Welcome to my channel. I am so thankful to have you here. I really am. I appreciate every person that comes to my channel and comes back to my channel, especially the people that keep coming back. It's amazing. So thank you. This is today's Daily News Clips. And I've got stuff from all over the world for you today. I think you're going to enjoy some of this. It's kind of funny. The first article I have is entitled South Korea to resume all military activities along the demarcation line. But you need to know what that means because it doesn't mean what you might think it means. South Korea's military on Tuesday said it would resume all military activities along the demarcation line separating the two Koreas and the Northwest Islands after suspending an inter-Korean military agreement. The suspension of the military agreement with the North, which President Yoon suk Yo approved... <laughs> oh, Yoon suk Yo, I guess that is... Tell me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Approved earlier on Tuesday is in response to North Korea's decision to send hundreds of balloons carrying trash over the border. <laughs> so, so North Korea is sending their trash to South Korea. Uh, they'll... <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. You really can't. The large scale spraying of little of filth balloons. <laughs> oh, oh heavens to Murgatroyd. Oh the lar <laughs> the large scale spraying of filth balloons has seriously threatened the safety of our people and caused property damage, the officials added. Pyongyang on Sunday said it had sent up 15 tons of waste paper using 3,500 balloons, while Seoul vowed unendurable measures against the North in response, which could include blaring propaganda from loudspeakers directed at the North. <laughs> I can't. Oh, God. Uh, I can't. <laughs> oh, so... North Korea is attacking the South with trash balloons and the South is retaliating with loudspeakers blaring propaganda. You can't, you cannot make this stuff up. I swear, this is so hilarious. Oh my God. I'm sure they don't think it is in Korea, but I mean, from, from an outside perspective, it just looks so silly. Oh, heavens to Murgatroyd. On a much more serious note, this is my second article. America's war machine can't make enough basic alt artillery fast enough. Yeah. The Pentagon focused on high-tech weapons after the Soviet Union fell, but the invasion of Ukraine has set off a race to revive output of time-tested munitions. Oh, yeah. Ground world's wars are still won with bullets and artillery shells. The U.S. can't make the latter fast enough. Yeah, wow. I'm so proud of my country. Yeah, we're really good at killing people. Long article, you can read the whole thing. But you know... We had a president named Dwight David Eisenhower, who was a leading general in World War II. And he warned us, lo those many years ago, back in the 1950s, about what he called the military industrial complex. And we should have heeded his warning. Hmm. One paragraph I'm going to read you. For years, the plant, this is the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, 
uh, has been far quieter than its Vietnam War era heyday when it was run by a different contractor. Employment at the plant peaked in, in 1970 at 1,836, according to Army data, and in, in the 1971 it produced more than 780,000 155 millimeter casings at about 65,000 a month. Yeah. Yeah, we are good at making things that kill people, that's for sure. Sadly. Maybe we should design a love bomb. Huh? Okay. On an entirely different note, we're going to go over to Europe and see what's going on in Europe. Well, Europe's holding elections, and the headline says it all, right? Europe swings to the right, led by France. And when they say led by France, let me read you what that means. Center-right and far-right parties are set to take the largest number of seats in Sunday's European Union election in the most populous nations, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and Poland. France led the rightward lurch with such a crushing victory in the far-right national rally that liberal president Emmanuel Macron dissolved France's parliament and called an early election. Early results suggest the national rally would win some 32% of the vote, more than twice that of the president's party. In Germany, the center-right is cruising to a comfortable victory with the far-right alternative for Germany coming second and beating Chancellor Olaf Scholz's socialists into third place. So, I, you know, I'm 77 years old. I've, I've watched this pendulum swing back and forth, back and forth. It's like, it, it's never at rest. And now it's swinging back to the right. And of course, the news all calls them radical right. <laughs> Collected together, the radical right parties would theoretic theoretically represent the second biggest bloc in the parliament, being on track to come first in France and Italy and second in Germany, the three biggest and most important countries in the 27-nation bloc. In Italy, Georgia, Maloney's right-wing party, secured the most support, projected to be about 28%. So, at a point in here somewhere, they list the... Uh, they list what they call the far right. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. I do not believe in a right-left dichotomy. I just do not. I think it's a false dichotomy. I think it does not communicate what's going on in the world from a political standpoint, governmental standpoint. I believe that all governments in the world, all of them, fall along a continuum from anarchy on one side to totalitarianism on the other. And every single government in the world is somewhere on that scale, either to the, to the totalitarian side or to the anarchic side, one or the other. And my personal opinion is we should err on the side of anarchy as much as possible while maintaining order. That's my personal opinion. And I believe that's what the United States Constitution did when it was first written, but it's been bastardized and aborted and altered and amended so many times that it's not, it's just a shadow of its former self. But uh, when they say that the people on the right are far right, they're trying to use denigratory terms. They're trying to defame the people on the right and make them sound like they're horrible. And they also call them fascists, which, by the way, if you watched the Prager video I gave you the other day by Dinesh D'Souza, you know that fascists are not on the right, they're on the left. But the left has managed, and see here I am using right and left when I shouldn't be, 
but but the uh, people on the closer to the totalitarian side in their their preferences for government, okay, uh, they call people with a preference for less government as being fascist. And if you know anything about fascism, if you watched Dinesh Souza's video on Prager about fascism, you know that fascism is a form of socialism. It's just a little, a little slightly altered form, but it is not uh, what they call right at all. Not even close, okay? And we shouldn't be calling them right and left anyway. We should be calling them anarchic and totalitarian because that's what they are. And the reality is that we're, we, human beings, we are in a constant battle between depending upon God and depending upon government. And if you depend upon government, you don't depend upon God. If you depend upon God, you don't depend upon government. God is the anarchist. Government is the totalitarianist. That's how simple it is. And if you look at all of the governments in the world from that prism, from that frame of reference, I think you'll see things a little differently. But that's just my opinion. You're entitled to yours as well, obviously. And now we got to go to India because they also had elections in India. Now, I confess I don't keep close track on what's going on in India in terms of politics, but Nar Narendra Modi secured his third term, but with less power than he expected. And if you read this article, um, they're actually kind of casting it as a defeat, which it's not. He won, but he won uh, less hugely than they thought he would. And so, you know, media always likes to frame things in a way that transmits whatever the message is that they're trying to transmit. And in this case, they're trying to say that Modi is weakened is what they're trying to say. So anyway, that's the news for today. I'll put the links in the description. And as always, I pray for you. I pray that you will be showered with grace and love and joy and peace and that everyone you love will be showered the same way. I want you to have your best life always. And before I sign off, I do have to show you my shirt. I don't want to. I don't have to. You can't make me. I'm retired. I've been retired for 10 years now. Yay. It's wonderful, trust me. I, I don't work any less. I actually probably work more, but well, maybe not. But anyway, I stay busy. Let's put it like that. I stay very busy. And I love it. I love it. Life is wonderful. And I want your life to be wonderful too. This is the Vietnam era vet out.